TVS Pro in this projector comparison. I'm Ted Bollinger and today we're going to be looking at the JVC, the NX7, the uh, Epson Pro Cinema 6050UB, and the Theo Z65. Hi, I'm Mike Bollinger and we're also comparing three very different projection technologies. Lycos in the JVC, LCD in Epson, and DLP with the Theo. We're looking at three different price points at $79.99, $39.99, and $52.98. Along with that, we're going to be looking at three different brightness ratings, 1900, 2600 lumens, and 2000 lumens. Okay, before we can compare the actual light output or the brightness of the projector, we have to do two things. First, we have to calibrate the projectors so that <clears throat> the white points are all the same and even though you will see a little bit of, care of color variation due to the color wheel, especially on the right, and the combination of shutter speed, um, you should be able to see that we are all rolling off right after 75%. Every one of these can see 75% in terms of your white clipping and in terms of your color clipping. Uh, again, we're rolling off in the red right at about 74-75%. The other thing that's important is to understand how many hours are on the lamps if it's a lamp-based projector. So we've got 56 hours here, 39 hours here. This is not a lamp-based projector, this is laser. It tells us we have 123. The reason that's important, uh, it really doesn't matter as much on the laser because it, it goes to 50% brightness over 20,000 hours. But on lamps, the first couple hundred hours, they can drop as much as 20%. It's one of the best calibration discs we've seen for uh, HDR 4K. And we're going to go into advanced setup. And we're going to choose the 10%, so we'll have a fairly good sample. And we're going to go over to 10-step gamma, because it starts on our 100%, which is what we want to measure. So now, we're going to come over here. We'll start with the Theo Z65, and we'll put this in the right calibration mode, and you should be able to see here what we're measuring. Um, so we're getting 28.5, 28, 29, 28.9. Over here on the Epson, we're getting 28, 28.2, 28.1, and over here, on the JVC, we're at 28.9, 29. So once they're calibrated, uh, this was the first surprise we had. All three of these projectors, the JVC is rated at 19, the Epson at 26, and we'll show you the bright mode here in just a minute. Um, but this is the calibrated HDR mode. They are all very, very close in terms of their peak brightness. We're getting just about 30 foot candles on the screen, which is where you want to be for a projector to get the best out of HDR. Okay, we've now taken the projectors out of their calibrated mode and put them in their very brightest uh, HDR mode. So this is HDR. Uh, JVC has removed their filter and they have their highest brightness mode called HDR, which takes the filter from the 2020 out. The Epson, uh, is in its uh, bright cinema mode and the Theo Z65 is in its brightest mode. So let's, let's measure these. Um, they're still good pictures. They're much brighter. If you needed that extra brightness, this would be if you're doing a larger screen and you're not as concerned with uh, very fine uh, calibration in terms of D65 and all the shadow detail. All of them have given up shadow detail Okay, we're getting a reading of about 22, 23. We'll call that 23. Um, you'll see we've given up detail in the clouds that uh, are, are normally here, but because they're in their brighter uncalibrated mode, we're missing that. We're clipping some of those. But notice the, the Epson now is 59, 59.259, so we'll call it 59. And over here on the Z65, we're getting a reading of 31, 30.9, 30.8, so about 31. So in their bright, brightest mode, it's still a very good picture. You can see we've lost a little bit uh, with the 1900 lumen projector, but we still have good 
brightness if you needed to do a larger screen with the other two projectors. To test the maximum light output or brightness of these three projectors, they are all now the Epson's in Dynamic, the JVC's in Natural, and the uh, Theo Z65 is in Bright. And we're going to freeze that. Let me back that up just a little bit on that Bright scene there because that's over, that's, that's oversaturated. Uh, so it's, it's at 100%. And if we measure each of these, We'll go ahead and measure the JVC. We're going to go right here in the middle of the door. It's coming in at 36.8. The Epson in its dynamic mode is at 97, 98. And over here on the Theo, we're at 52, 52.0, 52.1. So hopefully you can see there is three different colors here, and that's because when you're not in a calibrated mode, which the brightest mode is not, you are not going to get the highest color accuracy. Okay, now we're going to take a look at contrast. This was one of the other things that totally surprised us. This is the first time we've had all three different technologies, all with wide color gamut, but very different display technology. The JVC on the left has got your Lycos or liquid crystalline silicon which reflects the light. The Epson in the middle is transmissive LCD which allows the light to go through it. And the uh, Theo Z65 is DLP which reflects the light. Now the one challenge with DLP, and I'm going to change this so you can see the, the challenges here, we found a shutter speed that allows us to do full motion. So when you see the clips, the motion will be better than what we've done in the past. But can you see the color on the right and how that's changing? That is the best position there that we've been able to find, uh, but it does color it just a little bit. It adds a little pinkness to it that's not there. These are all within a few degrees of 6,500 degrees. And if I go one more shutter speed down, you'll see that we start to get some of the um, moving color. So we're gonna put it back to here and as you can see from the menus, each of these are now back to HDR. This is the uh, digital video disc, the HDR10 disc, I should say. And we're going to turn the JVC off. You can see it's in its high lamp mode. Uh, we've shut the iris off for this test. And we're going to turn its menu off. And we'll turn the Epson off and the Theo Z65 off. And so what we're going to do is measure first the brightness of each of the white square, well, just the center square for this test. And this is not ANSI. This is an ANSI test pattern, which is somewhat controversial because they say scenes don't have these colors, they're these brightness extremes. But with HDR, they actually do in some cases. But uh, this room is not completely black, but it is fair to these projectors because it's the same room. So um, let's put this into foot candles. And over here, you should be able to see some of these. We are getting 26.6, 26.5 here on the Epson. We're getting 27. 26.5, and over here on the JVC, we're getting 27.2, 27.1. So in terms of, again, when these are all calibrated in HDR mode, this uh, is amazingly close because a few foot candles is nothing. I mean, you cannot see that with your eye. Now here's the interesting part. Now we're going to put it in a much more sensitive mode and we're going to measure the black patch just above that so we get an idea of what the contrast is. Over here on the um, Theo Z65, we're getting a reading of 0.48. Here on the Epson, we're getting a reading of 0.56. And over here on the JVC, we're getting a reading of 0.54. 5.3, it's now down to 5.3, 5.2, stabilizing at about 5.2 to 5.3. So as you can see, the contrast between these is similar, but the reflective, which is the JVC on the left and the 
Theo Z65, the reflective technology definitely has the advantage when it comes to contrast ratio. So now we'll take a look at a couple of actual scenes to take a look at contrast. Um, this one coming up right here um, is a great range of tonal values. We have this very bright fluorescent tube here and you can compare that in each one of them. And then over here you have this very dark area and then you've got some great mid-tones here. So overall, if you look at that, um, they are very, very close, but there are some differences. The reflective technology in both the ones on the outside is just a little bit uh, more snappy, I would call it, or uh, just a higher contrast. It's also interesting. Here's what our projectors will look like in a few years uh, after the end of the world, I guess. Uh, this is another scene, by the way, from Mortal Engines, and I thought this was interesting. Um, so if these were in separate rooms, again, you would have a hard time seeing the differences in terms of contrast. But when it comes to contrast, reflective technology definitely has the edge. We're going to take a, one, a look at one more scene and then we'll move on. So we're going to take a look here. This is a 4K demo footage. We're going to freeze it. And this is to look at an actual scene that has an outdoor contrast. We've looked at some with indoor. Now this is outdoor contrast. So there's a couple of places you want to look at the contrast ratio between the foreground, between the trees here, and particularly these buildings along here and the trees. We're not looking for detail right now. We'll do that in another section of this video, but here we want to look at contrast. So you should see different degrees of contrast. Now to our eye here in person, and remember we're inviting you to come here and see it for yourself, but the, the two reflective technologies definitely have the edge when it comes to contrast and there are some significant differences if you look at this building and these buildings here in the background. To help understand some of the challenges with black levels, um, each of these projectors, and this is where they've been when we've been doing the HDR10, this is again off that same HDR10 uh, evaluation and calibration disk, this is the black clipping, and so what we should be able to see, and we can just barely see it up here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the video, but we can see 0.5 and 0.9, and then this is blacker than black, and it is gone. Um, same thing here, we're having a little more difficult, but if we went one more notch up, it was way too bright and started to bring up zero, and we need to be at zero. And here we can see the edges of 0.9 and 0.58. When it comes to black levels, that's where the JVC has really earned a reputation and a deserved one. They have the best uh, black levels in the industry. Um, in this scene, we're going to take a look at a very low light level scene after this lightning disappears, but you'll see detail here in the front of this creature, and it's a little bit different on each one of these in terms of what you can see. So I'm going to stand back here and then we're going to roll the scene and you can take a look at the differences. Oh, the other thing to keep in mind is the black level is also what's above and below the screen image and, and as you can see um, they are three distinct different levels but very very close. You would have a very difficult time uh, being able to determine the differences between these if you weren't side by side like we are now. So let's roll this. This is again from Mortal Engines and now the lightning's disappeared, so we're into a very, very dark area of the movie. But it's important to see how those dark levels compare. Again, if you look above and below the screen, you can see where they fall. Here we have a very low light, near black scene. In fact, we've had to turn the gain way up on the camera. So what you're seeing in this video is amplified over what our eyes can see. But the center chip is 10% gray. And we did notice that because of the way they're using lamp dimming um, or maybe in its electronic contrast circuit, but as you dim, they start to change color temperature just a little bit. So um, the two lamp projectors, it's gone a little bit green. It's still, you know, very usable, uh, but it isn't quite as neutral as what we're seeing here. The other difference is 
the, the type of electronic dimming, and the irises, by the way, are off, uh, as both manufacturers uh, suggest that you turn the irises off so you don't get the bouncing in, in scenes, and we'll look at that a little bit later. But, um, so this is actually as black as it can do with this amount of light. Now, the, the other thing you'll notice is you've got three different brightness degrees of the center square. Why is that? That's because um, the engineers at Optima, and after we modified it, we've improved this drastically, but we can't change the way they're modulating the lasers. So in this case, this is much brighter. So that's going to bring out some of the low level detail, but you sacrifice a little bit blacks. So here we're going to look at the chroma and luminance detail uh, between the three projectors. Uh, one of the key things to, to notice, um, if we look here in the cyan, uh, magenta, and white, the Optima does a, a relatively uh, nice job at reproducing those. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if we look here at the Epson, the Epson does a pretty good job here uh, with the cyan, although the text is a little bit uh, tricky to read. Uh, same thing with the uh, magenta. It really can't do magenta. It's doing a purple there. Um, and, and then it does try to do the white, but it's not quite as bright as, as the Optima there. And if we look here, the JVC does a, a decent job uh, with the, the white there, although it really doesn't look white. Um, Magenta is doing a little bit better than the Epson. And then it, it actually does a really good job with uh, the Cyan. So here we're going to look at actual resolution and detail in kind of a real world scenario. So this is just some 4K footage. And if we look here in this, these stairs, as we go to the top, we can see they get smaller, which is going to allow us to see the detail. Uh, there's some things that we look at here in the railing to make sure that the diagonal lines here are smooth. And if we look over here at the fence, as it gets smaller, um, we can actually see individual posts um, as it gets smaller up there, just on the top of the stairs there. So the JVC does a great job with that. Let's take a look at the Epson. Uh, the Epson does a decent job with it. However, because of the screen door effect, we actually can tell that uh, it's a little bit jagged there instead of as smooth as the JVC. Uh, and as we get into the stairs, some of those stairs kind of tend to disappear and just kind of look uh, as if they were just one because we just don't have the resolution or the detail there. So one other thing that I would like to point out with the Epson here is we're actually seeing some moray patterns here in the railings in this fence just because we don't have the amount of detail that we um, do here with the JVC. And let's take a look here at the Optima. Optima, I would say the railing actually looks the smoothest of all of them. It, it almost looks three-dimensional. Um, the stairs very well defined, especially as we get up to the top, we can see individual stairs. And uh, the railing there, absolutely, or not railing, but the fence there looks very nice. We can see individual rungs in the fence. Uh, it looks very, very clean. To further understand how each of these projectors handles uh, high resolution detail and, and what kind of resolution they each have, we're going to freeze this and we're going to zoom in and compare because we're looking at three very different technology, three very different uh, color filters. But again, as you can see from this picture, they look very, very good. So we're, we're going to zoom in. First, we'll go over here to the JVC and we're going to zoom into the eye area and be able to look as close as we can um, at the actual detail and resolution uh, that this camera is able to pick up and convey uh, after it's been compressed by YouTube and put on, but I'm, I'm hoping you'll be able to see some of the differences we're seeing here uh, by getting up close. So here, um, if you look at some of the face lines, the wrinkles, the detail in the eyebrow, now we're going we're gonna to shift over now to the, the Epson on the same eye very quickly, and when the camera is still here. You should be able to, if you can look closely, you should be able to actually see the 
uh, LCD grid structure. It does an amazing job at trying to reproduce the detail, but of course it can only reproduce so much because it's the equivalent of 4 million where the others are both over 8 million pixels. Now we'll move over here to the um, Theo Z65 and we'll go on that same eye area and as the camera focuses you should if you look very very carefully you should be able to see um, some of the detailed differences between what we're seeing. Now there are those that say well how could a single chip DLP that's using a uh, a shift technique be able to even come close to a native JVC. Well, we've noticed this before on Lycos projectors and as we researched it we found out that there is a, an effect called the fringe field effect and what that means is any liquid crystal display which Lycos is uh, using liquid crystals, they cannot completely shut off the charge between the transistors and there's a liquid crystal layer. And so the transition, which is what we've seen in other resolution charts, it can't go directly from white to black. The DLP has an advantage there in that it's a digital device. So it can turn off and it can turn on. And there's much less of that residual. Here the limitation is really the lens itself. Um, and the other challenge with a three chip device, which both the Epson and the JVC have, is when you have three chips, it's very hard to get those precisely aligned. So for that reason, they both have, and they've put in their projector systems, the uh, shift capability of the individual, they call it pixel shift, so that you can actually see. But as, as you can tell, um, if you didn't have these side by side, those are all excellent pictures up close or at 4K viewing system or distance, some of, uh, depending on your vision, some of you are uh, definitely going to be able to see some of the differences at 4K viewing distances, but they're all very, very good. This test signal helps us to set HDR10 uh, clipping uh, in the color as well as the white. So this we've already set. Uh, we're down at a negative 14 here on the JVC. If we bring it back up to zero, which is factory defaults, you'll notice that we've lost a lot of uh, shadow detail in uh, really all of our colors, but especially the magenta and the red, as well as the blue a little bit. Uh, if I take that back to negative 14, uh, which is where we had it set, uh, you'll notice we'll pick up the squares back here in the shadow detail um, so that we're not clipping those to actually measure how wide the color gamut is, we're using the CalMAN software, and this is the display. We have chosen to display the REC 2020 triangle, and our goal is to hit as close as we can to these targets. We'll start with the JVC NX7, um, and this is, as you can see, 70.6%, which is uh, a very good wide color gamut. If you take REC 709, and display it on this triangle, you'll get about 56%. So we've gone from 56 to 70, and that's why the colors look so amazing. And for many people, that whiter, richer color is really what 4K is about. Um, if we look now, we're gonna switch to the Epson. Um, the Epson, we get a little deeper greens. The rest of them are actually very close and we reach a little bit higher, but about the same, 73%. So if you're reaching uh, the DCI P3 cinema standard and you display it um, and calibrate it to within side of REC 2020, you should be in the 70s, and that's what we're getting here. Now we'll take a look at the Theo Z65, and here you can see we've increased our cyan, we've increased our greens significantly, and our blues. So we're able to achieve a 79.7 on this particular projector, so we're reaching very close to that 80% that we have on the Theo Z65. Here we're gonna look at uh, some color differences. This is a clip from Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Uh, and it, one of the things, they all do a very good job, but that I was noticing is, is we can definitely see on the Theo, the one on the right, uh, where the color really kind of stands out. Uh, some of the blue in her cheeks and also the purple in the middle of her face. Uh, it definitely looks like we've got a little bit more color 
uh, or a wider color gamut there than on either of the other two. Okay, let's go ahead and hit play. Definitely, I think what one of the things that kind of hit me offhand is is in the trees when you see the back uh, of the forest there. It, it, it's kind of interesting because you can see more colors or more shades of green than on the other two. The other two seem to be pretty similar. So to further compare the wide color gamut differences between these projectors, this is a, a scene where we're going to have some extreme high dynamic range and in a minute we're going to have some extreme colors. So we're going to freeze this and put it into frame by frame and you'll see this explosion as it occurs amidst some very high energy which will be in the form of very intense colors. We're going to freeze it when it gets a little bit bigger here and take a look at it. First of all, it's very good for looking at detail and where the clipping occurs with inside the highlights. Are we losing color? Are we losing detail within here? As you can see, all three of these projectors are doing a magnificent job. Okay, to test Blu-ray playback on a 4K display, this scaling test in the Spears and Men sealed disc is excellent. So we're going to go to that scaling test and we're going to, to zoom in. We'll start in the center here with the Epson. And I'm going to ask Mike uh, to go up close to the screen so you can see what we're seeing at home. And I, and I will mention that uh, that wide angle view, the JVC looked a little green and the uh, Theo looked a little magenta. But to the eye, these are, they're, they look the same and they're within a few degrees of each other because these are calibrated. But Mike, what do you see up there? So here in the middle, looking at the Epson, uh, we have two components to this spinning circle. We have the pinwheel in the middle and then we have these lines that are rotating around this circle here. Uh, it's a solid black line with a little bit of gradient on each side of it. Uh, the Epson scales very well. Uh, the pinwheel looks very clean as it goes in and out. The only thing I would say about it is because of the LCD technology, the screen door effect, uh, there are visible pixels. And so as the pinwheel moves in and out, it almost looks like it's going across um, you know, like uh, horizontal lines just because you're seeing the screen door effect. Uh, but it's, it's very clean. Uh, on the outside as well, uh, it just looks like it's rotating over a screen door um, just because we can see pixels, but it's very smooth and it looks very nice. Uh, looking at the JVC here, it's really quite um, disturbing um, simply because it is, there are a lot of scaling errors. We were really surprised uh, by looking at this. It almost looks like frequencies uh, moving in and out uh, on each of these solid black lines. As well as in the pinwheel here, we're seeing stair stepping and aliasing. Uh, and so it, it really up close does not look very good. Uh, let's take a look at the Optima. The Optima actually looks like the best of these three. Uh, it's as smooth as the Epson, but because we don't have the screen door effect, it looks nicer and cleaner. Uh, in fact, it's so good that the shading on these uh, lines here almost make it look like a three-dimensional you know, three uh, cylinder on, on each of those. Uh, so the scaling is very good here in the Optima. So in this uh, test footage, which is also on the uh, Spears and Munseal disc, we're going to take a look and see what happens from that test pattern to see if we can actually see it in the image of the picture. So we're going to freeze this scene of the fountain and we're going to zoom into the lion here so we can compare each of these. Mike, can you tell us what the differences are? Uh-huh. So starting here with the Optima, uh, we can clearly see this mountain lion here is, looks like he's wrangling a snake. Uh, very smooth, nice shading, looks very nice, clear edges. Uh, the water, although it's in motion, uh, does look very crisp and clear. Uh, we also notice the palm tree here. And then if we look here in the back uh, on this brick or cinder block building, uh, there is actually some fine detail that we're seeing in, in the bricks there. Uh, if we look here in the Epson, Epson does a very good job as well. Uh, the lion looks smooth. Uh, everything there in the fountain looks very, very nice, very good edges. Uh, we're not seeing the detail in the brick areas here, not quite as much detail in the palm tree. The, the one thing that we are seeing, of course, is the screen door effect uh, because of the LCD technology. So it's not quite as smooth overall when we're up close. 
uh, but back at viewing distance, it's not as noticeable. Uh, and then here in the JVC, it's really quite interesting because, again, I don't know what's going on with the scaling, but it almost looks like it's a posterized version. Uh, it, it, everything looks completely different. Uh, the water looks almost like it's cartoonish. Uh, we're seeing kind of weird edges around everything, and shading is just very different. It, it really does look like it was, you know, uh, colored, you know, by like a cartoon or something like that. But we are seeing the detail here in this brick building. So that is one thing that the JVC is pulling out there, whereas the rest of it doesn't look as smooth as the other two. So in conclusion, we want to make sure that everyone understands the advantages and also the disadvantages to each one of these projectors. There is no perfect projector. So we'll start with the JVC. The JVC has and, and deserves the respect of having the best blacks in the industry. It's an excellent projector. It has great HDR with its uh, auto uh, tone mapping. And because of its wide color gamut, when the filter's on, it has excellent color. If the NX7 is in your budget, I don't believe that you'll be disappointed in this projector. By the way, this footage is from Planet Earth 2 on Ultra HD Blu-ray. It's phenomenal, uh, phenomenal footage. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Uh, let's talk about the Epson Pro Cinema 6050. It's a very versatile projector with up to about 2,600 lumens of, of brightness. Uh, their HDR has been improved with their HDR Pro Performance. It's got excellent HD and Blu-ray scaling. We're really impressed with the overall image quality of that projector. Really for the money, it's, it's hard to be beat. On top of that, it comes with a three-year warranty. It comes with uh, an extra lamp in the box. It comes with a ceiling mount that is a very good chief uh, mount. And on top of that, it comes with a cable cover so that when it's mounted on the ceiling, you're not seeing cables dangling down and uh, the, it looks very nice and tidy. On the downside, because of, it, because of the native resolution of the LCD panel, there is a visible screen door effect, uh, certainly more, more so up close than at, at actual viewing distance, but it is there. Um, the other thing is because it's a lamp-based projector, you're going to have an initial shift of brightness and color uh, within the first couple hundred hours, and then that's going to kind of uh, be minimized and, and, and happen more gradually. Uh, but aside from that, it's, it's really a good projector, um, and, and for the money, it, it, it's hard to beat. On the Theo Z65, it has a laser which gives you very long-term stability, both in brightness and in color. It also gives you almost zero maintenance. The uh, Theo Z65 also has the highest, or widest, I should say, color gamut of these three projectors reaching um, 80 percent of Rec 2020. Um, on the downside, oh it's also, before I go on, it's also the uh, most compact, quietest, and smallest projector of the three. On the negative side, uh, or disadvantages, you need to consider when looking at a projector. Um, it uh, has, because it uses a color wheel, there are some people that can see a rainbow effect in the picture. Others don't see it at all. Some can see it but tolerate it. So that's something you really want to look at first and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, besides the rainbow, it's a manual zoom lens and for some that's very important. Uh, there are three different ways to do 2, 3, 5 to 1. We've covered that in another video so we won't get into it now, but a manual lens uh, is one of the disadvantages for some on the Theo Z65. And then, of course, the lag or the processing delay on the Theo Z65 is not as fast as it is on the Sony and Epson. I think the Epson is the fastest, then the JVC, and uh, then the Theo Z65. It's fine for casual gaming, but for serious gamers, they want something a little bit faster. Now, I want to talk just a minute and invite you to go to our website at uh, tvspecialist.com or just tvspec.com for short. Um, there we're going to have high resolution stills of this comparison with more explanations. We'll also tell you about the projector challenge because a lot of the things you may have seen on this video are going to be hard to believe and it's not the same as seeing it in person. Uh, we want to invite you to come here to Salt Lake and if you're in the market for one of these top uh, eight projectors which we'll list on our website we'll, and you end up buying one, we'll actually pay uh, up to half of your 
uh, travel costs in terms of your airfare up to $600. Uh, we've had one gentleman already do that on his own, and uh, I think he found that it made all the difference in the world. So we invite you to do that, and again, thanks for watching.